talk? Yep. Okay. Recording in progress. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So scripture and prayer. Who has scripture? I have a scripture. <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> I love it. Right? <laughs> so funny. Oh, God, that Julie thing. We'll have to tell you about that. that <laughs> I laughed about that for days. Oh, that was hilarious. Come on, Alicia. What? <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah, you guys will have to bring me up. To oh, I, we'll have to tell you. It was so funny. <laughs> All right, scripture. Sorry, we digress. Psalms 121. I will lift my eyes to the fields. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at, the, at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And that's the entire 121 Psalms. I like that one. In IV. Yeah. Okay. Any special prayer requests? Oh, my daughter and her boyfriend, they found an apartment. So they're. <laughs> <laughs> just you know that they they grow and continue to make good choices oh it's amazing that they can afford it <laughs> well uh, this, is, this yeah. is part of the growing that they're this going to be doing yeah. because yeah we'll see how it goes okay <sighs> A uh, continued prayer too for my um, my brother's wife, Carolyn. Today would have been their fifty eighth wedding. Oh, I called her today. She sounded good. She was with her um, my nephew, and they were going shopping. So she's been. I mean, she's really helped us. Just she's been wonderful, and um, because I think she said that. She was there. She she cried so much while he was sick <laughs> that oh. you know she knows yeah. he's at peace, and so she's doing great. But just prayer for her, and also for my sister in Detroit. Um, she's doing. She's improving, and sounded good today. So um, yeah, and just for my family as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, dear God, we come to you, you know, just as we are struggling to cope with the truth of life, we're grateful that you will never turn your back on us. You promise to give us so much wisdom and strength, and we need that in order to cope with the things of life. We ask you to continue to help us and strengthen us as we go through the trials of our life. Our Heavenly Father, we know that, you know, whatever we go through, that you're going to see us through it and you're going to strengthen us, our Heavenly Father. So we just pray that you will give us the strength so that whatever is put before us, our Heavenly Father, we'll be able to deal with it. There's so much, you know, happening in this world today, Lord, and we just want to come to you and just ask you to look upon those who are in charge and you know just change the hearts that need to be changed our heavenly father you know we were once a nation that did believe in god our heavenly father we just ask you to just turn us so that we will come back to you we want to pray for our church we want to pray for our pastor lord that you will continually strengthen him as he goes through what he's going through we know it must not be easy, you know, being a pastor in these times. There's so many things that come up. We want to pray for the staff that you continually guide them and strengthen them as they go forth and show them what you want them to do and what needs to be done. We want to come now and we want to pray for 
Harriet, her sister Carol, her sister-in-law Carolyn, Lord, that you know you will strengthen her in her loss, the Heavenly Father, and let her know that there's people that's there to love her and support her as she goes through her loss. And we want to also pray for her sister that you know wasn't able to make the the funeral, our Heavenly Father, but her spirit was there. We just ask you to continually strengthen her and as you know, she goes forth and that she will put her trust in you. Mm -hmm. And we want to pray for Hannah. And, you know, we want to pray that, you know, she and her uh, boyfriend will make the right decision as to what they're doing. I have to just lead them and guide them in the direction mm -hmm. that you have them, that you will for them to go. And we want to also pray for Michelle. We just pray that you will strengthen her and, you know, help her, you know, get better in what she's going through. And we just miss her and let her know that Heavenly Father, we want to pray for Sister Walker, who is healing. We just ask you to, you know, stay with her and Sister Georgia. And Lord, all the others that we haven't yet mentioned that are sick and who are going through a lot of struggle at this point, I ask you to continue to pray for my family who's, you know, going through a lot of hurt and Alita's kids and their grandkids. I have no problem. So look, we come to you asking all these things in your son's name. Say, and also, Lord, we don't want to forget about Teresa, that the blessing that you have bestowed upon her, Lord, we just ask you to continue mm -hmm. to strengthen her and Larry as she goes through what she's going through now. But all these things we ask in our son's name is for us that we pray in you. Amen. 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 So we'll go, uh -oh. oh, is it this one? There. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I had a bunch of tabs open. I'm like, oh boy, which one is it? <laughs> um, so kind of going, I it's not going to match the paper because I deleted what we already did. So it, it renumbers everything after I do that. Mm -hmm. so we're actually down around over. Uh, oh, close to number 10, I think. What page is that in that book? 31. Oh, so boy. we had just gotten past the part of circle head of or head over, and we were talking about Jesus being head over all and head of his body, the church. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I re-put that in there to just kind of go over where we were. So Ephesians 1, 17 through 23 was pretty much this section of oh, lesson. Um, and I don't think we have very much left, so we won't definitely go for the whole hour. Um, and then I'll send out the new, the next lesson. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so going over, do you want to reread Ephesians 1, 17 through 23? Do you want me to read it? Just to kind of refresh. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going to read it out of the book, and I, I never know which version she's using, so. <laughs> uh, all right, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you spiritual wisdom and revelation in your growing knowledge of him, since the eyes of your heart have been enlightened, so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the incomparable greatness of his power toward us who believe as displayed in the exercise of his immense strength. This power he exercised in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. <clears throat> Far above every rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And God put all things under Christ's feet, and he gave him to the church as head over all things. Now the church is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hmm. Over what? So we talked last week, we ended with going over Jesus is both 
head over all and head of his body, the church. Paul states head over outright in this passage. And he says body to foreshadow what's coming, head of the body. Further exploration of the head of the body concept will come later. So, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's later in this particular section or the next one, I don't know. Um, so over what is Christ said to be Lord, verses 21 and 22. So to me it says he put all things under his feet, right? Mm -hmm. So that power, that immense power, that resurrection power he placed Jesus above all things and now they're under his feet and he put him as the head of all things, including the church, right? I mean, yes, he's, oh, it says over all and all mm -hmm. to that effect. Um, and, and not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Right. All things all things yeah i think i put over everything that is named mm -hmm. right right yeah mm -hmm. yes every name that is named yeah far above wait far above so 21 goes into See, that's where i really should put those thing there 21 far above every rule what did i put every rule and authority every rule and authority. power and dominion and every name that is named right yeah. not only in this age but also in the one to come in the price mm -hmm. So for far above all, every rule and authority and power and dominion. Mm -hmm. So isn't that also talking about like angelic beings? Remember when we were talking about, I can't remember when it was, but yes, over all things, but when they're talking about, um, every rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come mm -hmm. so what are you trying to say <laughs> what i'm trying to say is because there was some more different ones in ephesians when we had oh so sorry about that when we were reading i think it was i want to say ephesians Three, where to go, where to go. Go back and look. I think it was Ephesians 3. I kind of referenced it. 3 and 10 and 6 and 12. 3 and 10. Yeah. Ephesians 3 and 10. 3 and 10 that says. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. So he's talking about the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Isn't, I can't remember when we said it, we were talking about more of angelic beings because he says he's got him head over all things. All things are under his mm -hmm. feet, right? Yeah. And then where else did I reference? 6 and 12, <laughs> Ephesians 6 and 12. Because that's not when he's talking. He's not talking about those things on earth when they say that. They're talking about things in heaven. 6 and 12 says. So here I think he's talking about everything that's, you know, on earth and in heaven. Right. Yeah. The forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about 
because it says uh, where to go. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And, and where are you, Maria? Where are you referencing? Uh, Ephesians 6 and 12. I did First I did 3 and 10, and then 6 and 12. So these are talking about um, kind of like, um kind of sounds like good angels and bad angels really i mean you know some that are dangerous and evil as it says and some that are not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so even though we don't know what all of those are he has also placed them under his feet Mm -hmm. Is that what it's saying? And that's kind of what I'm getting. I think I'm just trying to run that out there. And it makes, it made way more sense in my head than it's like coming out of my mouth right now. But it really, because it got me thinking, because it, it was talking about these things in heaven and on earth. So we know that he's head of all things, but it's also saying when it says, um, you know about spiritual realms it's saying for our struggle against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm so there he's talking about two different places here mm -hmm. yeah. heaven and earth and so that's kind of just where that kind of struck me because sometimes i think when we're reading you know it's so much about we equate it to the things of this world that we don't think that you know i don't know it's not always my first inclination to think about a world other than the one that i'm in even though yes i love thinking about going to heaven and being with jesus someday but i don't think of it like so much when i'm reading this scripture my mind wants to think just about this world mm -hmm. but yes. then when you you're you know reading that stuff of this world and of the heavenly realms that there's stuff up there too so i don't know i got a little deep i don't know <laughs> bear with me it happens <laughs> i know anyway anyone else <laughs> no <laughs> like after that i need a We're good. i'm good <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. This is an easy one. What areas of your life do you need to yield to the sovereign reign and rule of Christ? Anyone? Well, I don't know. I think I'd just say that. Um, I need to put God over, I think I was answering another question somewhere else, over everything that I do and all my decisions that I make. And, uh, you know, that needs to be part of my life because a lot of times I just do stuff and then afterwards I'm like, oh, I didn't ask God about it. I didn't pray about it. And I think that's something that, you know, I'm struggling with now to make sure that he's part of all my decision making. And um, and that's something that's a struggle for me at this point, you know, because I, I still have my, I want to do it myself. I, I think I can do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> but doesn't he have a way of just, doesn't the Holy Spirit have a way of letting you know that you can't do it by yourself? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> then you're like, why did I do that? I know. Look, it, it'll bring you back. Uh, yeah. I, that's one of the things that I deal with as well. And that's why um, one of the songs that we used to teach the kids in BSF was Good Morning, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is your day. <laughs> I am your child. Show me the way. And oh. I... Um, <laughs> I think about that song all the time because, you know, it's the word is very simple, very easy, but it means a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, good morning, God. How are you? Well, I'm here again. You know, it's like mm -hmm. order my steps. You know, show me what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. Me. And when we get off track, I mean, 
the Holy Spirit got a way of just nudging you. As, and as, as, as we grow deeper and deeper, you know, he just kind of, hey, yeah. you know, get back over there. <laughs> he really does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I agree, but it's something that I too, a lot of times I have to backtrack because mm -hmm. I started and I'd be like, oh, I didn't talk. I did not talk with God or meditate or pray on this. I need to stop for a minute. Because I already know that my track record is horrible. <laughs> Amen. You know, if, if I don't remember anything else, if I remember what my track record looks like, <laughs> bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is so true. Look, I'm oh, bring me back, Lord, to the day I first yeah, met you. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask Teresa to sing that song. I don't I, know. I don't even I don't know that song. Oh, I don't know that let me see if I can remember the words. Uh, good morning, God. This is your day. I am your child. Call me the way. You know what you should I tell you what, text type that in for me and send it to me. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to remind my grandson, because he was in um, the, you know, BSF, the children. Mm -hmm. And so uh -huh. I, you know, I want to sing that, make him remember that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was, we used to be one of the ones that we say that they liked. They yeah. liked one and um, holy, 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 for some reason. they. Oh. Were, I don't know if it was because they could say all the holies or whatever. <laughs> that was one of their favorite songs, but. Good morning, God. I mean, we was after yep. <laughs> you know we got started. That would be one of the first songs. Yeah, show me the way. Uh, yeah. Show me the way. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah, to that's that's cute. Good morning. Um, it is. It's so important. I do that. I call it my um. What do I call it? I call it my board meeting in the mornings with God because I before I do you know I I mean I get up I take the dogs to the park that kind of little stuff. But then as soon as that's done, I don't do anything else. My first thing I do is have my devotion and my prayer and my Bible study. And I mean, that can, I, that's the one thing during my day that I do not put any time limit on. Mm -hmm. It takes as long as it takes. I get up at five o'clock in the morning for that very reason so that I have, you know, time, however long that's going to last, that's up to God. And then to be able to do the rest of my stuff. But I don't do anything before I do that because, you know, I want my day to go how God wants it to go. So mm -hmm. I can, you know, I can think I know what I'm going to do that day. And it can last week. We had, as you know, we had, uh, we took a week off of all of our online stuff. And so you think, okay, so we're not going to be doing that. We were still here, but it's like, okay, we're going to get all this stuff done. Well, wouldn't you know, God just kept sending these divine appointments. I sat with this one lady for what probably, I mean, it only felt like an hour, but it turned out to be like four hours or so mm. of sitting and she just was so distraught and can only speak Spanish. Mm. And oh, wow. so we sat and maybe it was even longer than that, but oh my goodness. And to just be in that moment. Now, had we still been doing our thing and everything was revolved around what time are we going online? You wouldn't, you wouldn't have, have been able to do that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and she has been in this pain for over a year. And it's like, wow, God, you just use that time. Like, you know, here I am thinking, okay, this is what I'm going to get done today. I don't have Bible study. I don't have to do this. So this, this, and this, and I had all these plans. Not one of those things got done, but I was so grateful. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was something that, she really needed and um wow yeah and that i need and that you know come on 
to send this to the one person that can speak Spanish, who can understand her, who can, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was like, had she gone anywhere else, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. That's only God. That can only be God. And um, it was such a blessing to me. And, um, you know, she was thanking me, but I was thanking her right back. Like, you just have no idea that you just, mm. this is what we do. Here I am, you know, just ignorantly thinking I knew what I was going to do that day. <laughs> and here comes God. Yeah. Who says, well, no, yeah, yeah, that's not what you're going to do that. today, you know? <laughs> and you just never know. And I think in the in his will you know we i always say lord whatever happens today your will be done may everything mm -hmm. i do and say glorify and honor you and forgive me if it doesn't because you know you gotta just <laughs> we're not perfect i'm gonna do something in the course of the day that he's gonna be like oh you know <laughs> and you know it just it, you really have to look for that stuff. And I think you do need to yield to not making so many plans, you know, and not, and just trying to remember that, you know, I always say my aunt always has had this saying and she'd always, every time she'd say something, whether she was going to go somewhere or I'll see you in the morning, every time she said something like that, she'd follow it up with, si Dios quiere, which means if God wants. God willing. Yeah. God willing, yeah. yeah. Just like that. But I always, I'm like, why is she always saying that as a kid? You're like, oh, brother. You know, <laughs> I didn't understand it then. I understand it now. Yeah. But, um, you know, you do yeah. you have to say that. If, if that's what God wants, then this is what I'm going to do. If it's not, right. he'll let right. me know. Like Teresa said, he'll let you know. He'll yank you, you know, be like, no, no. <laughs> and yeah, I know one thing, if I don't set it, set that time to, you know, steady God's word, I won't do it or I'll push it off. Because, you know, it's like, I'll come downstairs and I'm like, ah, oh, I got to clean this table before I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you clean the table. Well, I mean, I'm going to be hungry, so I should fix some coffee and something to eat. And then I'll sit down. You know, so it's really, by the time you finish, it's like, whoa, it's like 10 o'clock. You know? And that's when people are up and they start calling you. You're like, oh, man. But, um, yeah, so I realize I really do have to get, even if the table's messed up uh, and or whatever's going on, I need to just come in, sit down, and just, you know, like you said, Maria, just do until God said, you know, it's over. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I do, I have to, because, you know, I know for me, my day's not the same if I don't, because I've let things get in the way of that. And I made a decision like, no, I don't, you know, whatever's going on doesn't matter. I, that time is, is yeah. sacred and that, yeah. that does not get my entire day can get rearranged and I'm fine with it. That will not. And so no yeah. matter what happens within my day, I know that I'm going to spend that time with God every single morning. And that's super important. Yeah. To both of us, not just to me, but God, and I'm sure he's <laughs> happy about it too. <laughs> well, I have, I, Alicia, I would just, um, Let's say to you that um, I'm guilty of doing the same thing uh, at times. But a friend of mine just uh, since, you know, I've been dealing with um, going to Seattle and everything, she turned me on to audio, day, daily audio Bible. So mm -hmm. I put that on because all I got to do is hit the button and it doesn't matter where I'm at, whether I'm in the kitchen or whatever. Mm -hmm. I hear it, and I found that that will prompt me in to getting where, back to where I need to be. Mm. You might just look for a little something like that to just, you know, it doesn't even matter mm -hmm. if the table is cluttered. I, try, <laughs> I clean mine every night, and it's still, uh -huh. it's to be a mess. But yeah. I just found that listening to it, and it's easy. Once I downloaded it, I just hit the button, and so I can walk and take the phone with me or... That's true. 
computer and I can hear it and usually something is said that will prompt me to sit down or to get get my focus back. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I'm gonna look I'm gonna look on my my phone and look that up. Yeah. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, she, true, she, said, she yeah, she had told me she said, Well put it on your she said, because she's checking on me, are you walking? Are you drinking water? <laughs> and all of that. And she's like, just put your headphones on and just, you know, do it while you walk. And she said, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not, but I found that, you know, like I said, it'll prompt me to dig a little deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Because I know for me, I'm like Alicia too like uh if i do it anywhere but the same spot every day i will start seeing all the things that need to get done and i'll <laughs> be like okay i'll just do the dishes first oh maybe i'll just cook now and oh for goodness sake now the dogs need to get taken out again so all right <laughs> but yeah no i i make sure that it's same time every day and that's the only thing in my day that is you know that i stick to as far as my plan <laughs> mm -hmm. so where's harriet you're muted my sister was calling and i was texting her to say oh. call you in 30 minutes <laughs> oh okay yeah we're, we're gonna wrap up in a few minutes but i but, um, um i just wanted to say that i applaud you ladies because i'm not there yet so i'm working on that but you're That's here fine. right now. In that yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I, I know I have a ways to go. So I'm. Hey, we all have. We a all do. <laughs> a work in progress. But no, I, and that's what I need because I do the very, the very same thing that you guys are saying. It's up and it's like, you know, thanking him for waking me up and, and getting me on my day. And, but then I'm like, okay, I got to do this. Well, I got to make my coffee. And then I got to <laughs> go outside and get my newspaper. Then I might, you know, so yeah. <laughs> and I, well, I may as well throw a load of laundry in. It's early. Right. Yes. But uh, yeah, so that's definitely yeah. something that um, I need to be doing and need to work on. But you know, I think, you know, like, like Trisha was saying, you just do, just do one thing, just think of one thing, because what happens is the devil will make us feel guilty. Of, oh, see, you're not doing, you might as well not right. do it at all. Right. You know, <laughs> you're late, you know, look what time it is, you know. Right, you know, so it, <laughs> right. right. So even if you get up and you just read a scripture or whatever, you know, just think of, you know, just, just do that on a regular basis. I had given my mother this book and it was like 15 minutes for devotions or some grandma's 15 minutes for a devotion. And it's real simple, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I was doing real well. <laughs> I put that book down, couldn't find it for about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I would get, oh, I'm reading now. This is really great. And then, uh, you know, I was cleaning up somewhere where Davion was. And I'm like, here's my book, you know, <laughs> but um, I think you just find something that works for you, you know, for, yeah. you know, even if just 10 minutes a day, you know, in the morning, just get up, pray, do what you, you know, and do that. And, yeah. um, you know, and don't feel guilty that, you know, because like I said, the devil will come in and make, make you feel guilty about a lot of things. Right. You know, let God work on you, you That's know, just pray. Right. Yeah. He's very quick. Oh. Yeah. He's very quick. You got to be on it because he will slip in there so quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You really want to go back to sleep, right? <laughs> kind of, yeah. No. <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, yeah. you know, or someone will, you, your, my phone will start going off. Like someone yeah. will start texting right. or getting all these emails or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I need to just turn that off right now mm -hmm. because it's, you know, I'm thinking about it. Like, well, well what if it's important? Uh, yeah. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is important. So I, it's a struggle. I'm not saying I, I have a, 
really easy time. Sometimes I'll just sit there and go, Lord, help my focus because it's <laughs> all over the place. I can't focus on God and, and I'm focusing, my mind's going all these different directions and it's like, oh my goodness. Some days yeah. I have this fight to get through my devotion. And, you know. Right. So yeah, he's he's quick. All right. So Paul envisions a body. This is our last one, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Paul envisions a body in which Christ is the head and the collective church is his body and Christ is Lord over all. With that picture in mind, what do you think it means that the church is the fullness of Christ? Verse 23, which says, go back. Now the church is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Mm. I kind of think the fullness of him is how Jesus fills his church. He fills us with, if we're his church, fills us with his presence, fills us with blessing. We're filled with his word, you know, when they, when they say, fill me up, you know, or he's full of the spirit. She's full of the spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's kind of what I equate that fullness of Christ of being. And, and if we're his church, that it's that the way that he fills us with him and fills us with blessing and, you know, that's just kind of what I, that's how I see it. You might see it differently. Hmm. And even the church, how, even in the church, in the building, you know, I mean, you can feel his presence. You can feel the fullness, you know, when you're there. I mean, you can feel that anywhere that you have Christ because you have him with you all the time. But even when everybody's together in that fellowship, the body of Christ, mm -hmm. Christians together, you can feel that fullness as well. If everyone is full of Christ, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, like, you know, as the church, we need to work, you know, together in unity. And, you know, not work alone. You know, like they talk about how, you know, our bodies have different parts of them and mm -hmm. how one depends upon the other. And, you know, you look at the church as being that, you know, like the pastor's the head, then you have all these auxiliaries underneath him. Mm -hmm. And if one of those are not working and functioning the way they're supposed to, it's going to disrupt the other, you know, oh, yeah. the other groups and stuff. So, you know, until we get to that point, I think when I was was, my, I was going to say Mother Father's Day when I was listening to Pastor, and you know how I don't I, when I go I stay in a car, you know, and I force myself to get out this time. And one thing I realized is that how important that body is. When I saw everyone there just coming together and just really was just hugging each other and you know and or just saying hi to one another. You know, you felt that the body was there. And, and even though we weren't in the church, I still felt it outside the church. You know, the presence of, of you know, God just being there and the spirit, you know, just going around. So I think it's really important that, you know, we re recognize that it's not so much the building, it's us who make up that part that, you know, makes the whole church function, you know. You know, we should just go there to get filled, you know, like Reverend Coffey used to say, like a gas station, you go get filled up, and then you leave that gas station and go out, you know, and this is what we should be, all on one accord. Anyone else? There's a little blurb in my Bible down here. In my, this is one of my study Bibles. That put oh, like nice. Things at the bottom, and it says, um, <clears throat> these are God's lines. Christ reigns at God's right hand. Don't ever forget that. 
In fact, don't ever read your newspaper without your Bible in hand. Mm. You need to read the full news. You need to know what's really happening. You need to believe the Bible. Christ rules. Wow. Wow. Never thought about that. <laughs> Never thought about that. And I wasn't yes. going to say anything, and then Harriet was saying, did she go get her news? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way you get your Bible out now, Harriet. <laughs> oh, he's quick, isn't he, Harriet? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, wow. That was, time that was timely. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was, it's a it's a good little paragraph there, but that part I was cracking. <laughs> These are God's headlines. I like that. I love it. Wow, I wouldn't have ever thought of that, but you know. That's good. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then it says list some ways in which you have seen or experienced the church, God's people being the physical manifestation of Christ. And there are, I mean, you know, I, I think about, you know, and I always say this, I think about people like Sister Banks and even Brother Banks, and there's so many, you know, from what I hear about uh, Deacon Love, I never got to meet him, he had passed before I got here, but, um, mm. mm -hmm. yes, yeah. just there's certain people, certain instances, and you see it all the time. You just have to be willing to see that because sometimes we get so wrapped up in the drama and the negativity that happens in church that we forget to look for those things, you know, mm -hmm. but they're there. Mm -hmm. mm. Alicia, I found um, Harry too young, uh, Mother Burnham. That I was thinking of her when you said I that. was looking at a I was going through some pictures and I found a picture where the last retreat that she was at, I think oh. was we had and she was sitting there with her little crocheted hat on. <laughs> um yes. everything and she was just sitting there it, being her peaceful little self, but talking to her was amazing. Yeah. Really. She was one of the sisters in the church. You know, this is what I really miss that our kids are going to kind of miss having those elders in the church that had that love and that spirit you know like sister walker has that also you know <laughs> just being able to yes the kids be able to see god through her you know mm -hmm. and sister vernon was like that I, you know i've never never heard her say anything negative or, you know, like brother love, you know, and I'm like, man, I wish I can be like that. Yeah. <laughs> <I> know, <laughs> never had, you know, never had a conversation where it was a, talking about someone or negative or, well, we should do that. Yeah, he should do that. Never, you know, and I, I you know, and that, those are the people that we need more of, you know, that's the kind of person I want to be, you know, um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, those, I miss them, you know, and mm -hmm. those elders of the church. They used to sit over there with their hats on, girl. You walk around their church and they'd be sitting there. And, you know, I, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. just have that love for, for God. I think of uh, Mrs. Jones, Gladys Jones. Yes. Gladys oh, yes. Jones. yes. My yes. husband lost Sister Gray. Yes. yes. I, I yeah. mean, those women were, they were really... Just yes. their, like you're saying, just their presence, you know, yes. made you feel a certain way and, and yeah. yeah, grateful for, for them. Yeah. And like you say, Sister Banks, yeah. I just admire oh, yes. so much. Yeah, all those people, you know, it's just like, yeah, so we, you know, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to once we do get back, how God has changed us you know and for the better i'm praying yeah, yeah. <laughs> pray hard <laughs> we've seen some glimpses you might want to pray a little more <laughs> pray hard <laughs> so you, i'm just praying this pandemic has made a difference in our lives oh yes yeah definitely has made one in mind i just have um realize that um, 
the thing, one of the qualities of being building that relationship is feeling, spending quality time, but not getting overloaded and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. of the church uh, with the different organizations and everything because you find yourself stretched so you're not putting in what you really need to be putting in yeah you know we have this sense of well nobody else is doing it well maybe we need to sit back and let God work out who's really going to do it Mm -hmm. whatever so for me it has done it has backed me up and got my, changed my path a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because the other side of it is, is like I remember the old folks saying to us, like you just said, to your uh, young folks, Alicia, it's y'all's turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we were growing up, we was in the kitchen washing dishes, cooking, mm-hmm. do stuff. And then there came a time that they'd be like, hmm, you know what to do, get in there and do it. Um, <laughs> Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, we have we're we we're not gonna be here forever. So we do have to stay ground, share what we can with people, and especially mm-hmm. the generation. You know, they may not want to hear it because I didn't want to hear it sometimes when people mm-hmm. are me stuff. I'd be like, okay, well, whatever. You know, and then I go back and I get convicted because it was the truth. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's true. I mean, that's something I realized that being, you know, going home for this trip is, you know, we, we are the elders, you know, mm-hmm. and, and <laughs> it's, right. Right. it's time, you know, we have to turn over some stuff and, and yes. so that they know how to carry on and do what, you know, what needs to be done. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I think of it as just kind of, uh, I told my niece, I, I said, you know, we gave the baton to her and she's carrying that, you know, mm-hmm. and not only her, but just my nephews and, mm-hmm. and my mm-hmm. brother's sons and how they just stepped up, you know, and, and it's really something to see when, when that happens, you know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you're really grateful that, uh, because I think sometimes we think they're, they're not watching and not listening, but I think they are. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, they you know, are. and that's important mm-hmm. to be that role model and, mm-hmm. and show them. And then you know, no, it's your you got to do that. It's your turn. Yeah, yeah. But it's hard to relinquish that too. <laughs> yeah, we got to step back though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's okay, you know. I mean, that's that's the work that God had for you to do, and now yeah. you know there's a new generation coming in, and it's like. And being encouraged because yes. we're not doing it your way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. We used to do it this way. Yeah, <laughs> no, be an encourager. It's different, you know. And yeah. They, yeah. They dealing with what they the generation they're dealing with, just like we did. So, you mm-hmm. know, it may not look may not look like we think it should look, but you know, the result can be the same and more, and that's what we really want. Yeah, and all we had to do is just be there to support them, and, you know, and encourage them. And if they're going right. the wrong way, then, you yeah. know, give them that positive criticism, you know, rather than trying to break them down. You right. Know? right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's how yeah. they feel. You might as well do that, because that's yeah. how they end up feeling yeah. like, is this exactly. what Christians act like? It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. We've lost yeah. another one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and you know, be be okay to sit down and discuss, you know, if you cross the line or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Having that conversation. Mm-hmm. Talk about it and apologize if you got it. Whatever you need to do to right. get yeah. the journey back where it needs to be instead mm-hmm. of the little festering thing that go over here because at the end of the day, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, you can't, you can't treat a uh, young adult like a child. Mm-hmm. And they are growing just like we're still growing. There's always somebody that can lead and direct us. And we have to be willing that when we do something wrong or if, we, if we're a little aggressive or, you know, right now. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, we need to be able, they need to see that side because they need to know that it's okay that we're going to make right. yeah. that things are going to happen and that and i'm willing to come and talk about it and ask me for forgiveness and mm -hmm. we work through this so that the road will remain smooth and not a lot of Bumped. these little pockets over here people holding the things life is way too short right. Right. yeah 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 that's true mm. so true well that was a good Good section. The next one is yes. going to be, ooh, the meek will inherit the earth. That's a short one, so that's be a one, one, one day or. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. The one after that is called Better Than Fiji Grace. I don't know what that means, but we'll find <laughs> out in two weeks. Wow. <laughs> Better than Fiji. So our next, before I close this out here, our next outdoor service, parking lot service will be on July 11th. So we weren't gonna do it since this Sunday's 4th of July. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not gonna do it, yeah. So we're going July 11th and then I believe two weeks after that. Okay. So are we still thinking about having a women's retreat, conference, whatever? Um, I know them. Actually, you know what? The men, I believe, are planning on going up to Casadero. As far as I know, they're going, I want to say, October. So, were we wanting to have it somewhere, or do we want to have it on the uh, or? Have it too. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm the same. I'm, I'm with you. I'm not in a hurry to go anywhere like that. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, and I'm not sure how many people can actually make it out to many places. Oh, I, I know. Can, yeah. Yeah. No, I see now. Most yeah. of our group are senior, senior age people. Yeah. <laughs> and exactly. uh, and that's one reason why they stopped going to the camp before because. It was just too much walking and, you know. Not yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really and um, So are we thinking on Zoom or in or on think, Facebook or something like that? Um, probably Zoom. Um, yeah, let me, I'll, I'll talk to Pastor about it and see if maybe we can't get some and I say that yes. Teresa will be one of our speakers. <laughs> Ooh, like, here we go. <laughs> I'm volunteering her. <laughs> I know, right? Look at the testimony this year has brought her. <laughs> you are my sister. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're welcome. <laughs> So really quick, Harriet, well actually Harriet and Teresa, you'll appreciate this because of what we go through every Tuesday with the who's got scripture, who's got prayer <laughs> debate. And so um, Sister Julie was, she was here for, I think it was the Father's Day service and uh -huh. she yeah. had heard some news about somebody and she says, oh my gosh, we just, oh, we need to pray. We knew she was just devastated about it. So we were yes. talking about it a little bit. It was me and Alicia and Michelle and her. And she says, oh God, you know, we just, we have to pray for all of those that are involved and we just need to pray and we just need to pray. She goes, come on, ladies, we need to pray. So we held uh -huh. hands and we're like, yeah, yeah, we need to pray. She goes, go on, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> and Alicia, what? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, you got that sign. You got that sign. Oh my God, it was so funny. I will pray. <laughs> we just need to oh, pray. Me. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she goes, yeah, like, oh, okay, Alicia. Alicia. <laughs> we had to laugh oh, about five oh, minutes. Oh, we started was, laughing. I, I cannot <laughs> believe this. If you only knew how funny that was. That's, <laughs> I can tell, oh, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it was so funny. Yeah, it was. Oh. You know, that happened to me. Remember when we went to LA, Alicia? 
or um yes a uh, uh, yeah Aquila thing yes <laughs> and we were we were in the hotel and we were doing we were gonna have Sunday school because it was a good one. Um, brother and sister Banks it was Leisha I don't know whoever else sister was. Burgess and her husband and her, oh. her mom was there and we were sitting in there uh -huh. and all of a sudden they said okay Teresa you can lead I'm like what <laughs> what I was like Alicia what oh, what me <laughs> Look, so wow. like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, huh? What, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, but that, you know, the old folks used to teach us and we were taught to always be prepared. No, yeah. But you just, you always be prepared because you don't know. You, you don't right. know when you're going to be called on. So that's, that's right. and you know, as, as we build these relationships and get deeper and closer to Christ, you know, we laugh about it, but at the same time, we think we be ready, okay? Right? <laughs> Always be ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that is so funny, but you're right. <laughs> great. That's great. Wow. All right, ladies, I'm going to pray us out. Thank you for the fellowship. I love it. Missed it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It it's turned out to be a back, very busy guys. week. I'm I like, boy. You all too. I missed you guys. Oh, we missed yeah, we you. Missed we really you. did. So glad mm -hmm. to have you back. Yes. Yeah. Be back. <sighs> all right. Let's go in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for thank waking you, us God. up and giving us our portion of health and strength and thank you. letting us know that your will be done no matter what we try to plan to do. And Lord, we just ask forgiveness of our sins, those known and unknown. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy, which we, we don't deserve, but you give it to us all the time. Amen. Lord, I ask blessing and thank you for these ladies, for all of us that were able to be here tonight, and just for the hearts and minds that filled this study tonight. Lord, we're so grateful. We pray for those that were not able to be here tonight for whatever reason, and we just lift them right on up to you, whatever they're going through today, Lord. And um, we just thank you for this study and this word and this constant reminder of just how powerful and gracious and amazing you are. And it, just to remember to just search you and, and look for you in everything that we do and just to stop and stop and smell the roses and see the Jesus and the God and, and everything that's around us because we just tend to get so distracted and so caught up and with that enemy and that we, we, we miss our blessings sometimes and we let those things pass by that could just bless our day and no matter how small or how big they are, Lord, and that we just remember to thank you and honor and glorify you for those. And Lord, those other ones on our prayer list from this week that, that we didn't mention, the Cervantes family mm -hmm. for healing and comfort. They, they lost a family member a year ago, and they're just, they're still grieving so, so much, Lord. And we just live mm -hmm. with you in a mighty way. And for the Burt family, for healing and restoration, for Brother Henry Jones, who was a friend of mine, he is in stage three colon cancer and is beginning chemo this week so we just lift him up in prayer ricky sandry who is battling brain cancer lord and sent us a prayer request through our online and lord we may not know all of them but you do and we just we lift them and all of their mm -hmm. illnesses and, and griefs and sorrows and challenges and victories right up to you and our sick and shut in list lord just Quickly going through it, Frederick Brady, Patricia Jones, Margaret Michaels, Roderick Walker, Anthony Hopkins, Lanita Marie Johnson, Trey Marcus Ganey, Joseph Hampton, who is Roy Hampton's brother, he's in the hospital right now, mm. Keith Lewis Oliver, Larry Newsom, Dean Backman, Brian Gorin, Georgia Payton, Henry Jones, Viney Harris, Layman Lawrence, Marion Nelson, Beverly Combs, Marcel Walker, Sharon Rockstead. Lord, we just lift every single one of Thank them you. to you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for our sister Teresa, who's getting ready to leave on another 
journey of her testimony, Lord, that hopefully she will be speaking about at our women's retreat on Zoom. <laughs> we just ask that you bless her and Larry in a mighty way as, as they make another travel to Seattle, Lord, and that your will be done through all of it. And for Sister Carolyn, who is Johnny's wife, and just the whole family there in Louisiana dealing with that loss, and the Bonner family at the loss of Aletha, and Lord, just that healing process after after the service after they've been laid to rest and now it's our time to heal and grieve and, and get through that process and lord we just praise you and thank you and reach out to you and all of it and lord as we go on just bless our homes and our families and all the families that are represented here all the people that will be watching this study and that they're just blessed by your holy word as we are lord, we love you we praise you we honor and worship you in jesus mighty name we pray amen and thank god Amen. 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 Okay. Good okay. seeing you guys. Here we go. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. We'll see you, you too. We'll be back online this week. So <laughs> for our regular scheduled right. programming. Okay. See you guys later. All right. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. <laughs>